Hello, this is Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater. Before we begin our program, I'd like to let you know that free newsletters are available from our ministry. Just email us at cdebater at aol.com and give us your mailing address and we'll mail them out to you for free. You can also call us at 512-218-8022 and leave your address there. You can also access all our newsletters online by going to one of our three websites called BibleQuery.org. Once on the homepage, simply click on the Experience box and then scroll down to the newsletter section as shown here. Since our number one most watched video of the over 548 videos we have produced for YouTube at the time of this recording is Unpopular Bible Doctrines number one, The Biblical God No One Wants to Know, with over 433,000 viewings, our latest newsletter is called Unpopular Topic, How Sovereign is God. Our second most viewed YouTube video is Six-Year-Old Wife of Muhammad Was Okay by the Muslim God Allah, But Not by the Biblical God of Jesus, with over 341,000 viewings. We also have three newsletters available on Islam. Our video, Debate, Larry Wessels versus Two Jehovah's Witnesses at a University Study Center, currently has close to 150,000 views. See our newsletter on the Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses, Deceived Deceivers. Our video, Is Jesus God Almighty in the Flesh, Meaning the Second Person of the Trinity, or is he something else, has over 101,000 viewings. See our newsletter, Testimony to the Eternal Godhead, the Trinity. Our video, Biography, the famous 19th century Prince of Preachers, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, a man of God, has close to 89,000 views. See two of our newsletters with lead articles from sermons by Spurgeon. Our video, UFOs, Ancient Aliens or Beings of the Fourth Dimension, number one, fact or fiction, has over 207,000 viewings. Not only do UFOs and the occult use the same disciplines, such as levitation, teleportation of objects, psychokinesis, clairvoyance, automatic writing, and telepathy, but their theologies are completely foreign to biblical Christianity. UFO theologies include everything from reincarnation and evolution to man achieving cosmic godhood, but they do not include Jesus Christ as the only mediator between God and man, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. We have two newsletters related to the world of the occult to which UFOs are a part. Our video, Former Roman Catholic Bride of Christ Nun Testifies of Abnormal Life in the Convent, has over 67,000 viewings. Our video featuring former Roman Catholic Rob Zins, who has a Master of Theology from Dallas Theological Seminary, Historical split between Roman Catholicism and the Christ of the Scripture, man's word or God's word, has over 53,000 viewings. See our two newsletters on the subject of Roman Catholicism. Our video, Cult of Ellen G. White, number one, beginnings of the 19th century religion called Seventh-day Adventism, has over 48,000 viewings and features former Seventh-day Adventist Wallace Slattery, who has 44 years' experience with this religion. Our playlist, called Dealing with Seventh-day Adventism and Their Prophetess, features 15 videos with 14 hours of material. See our newsletter, Seventh-day Adventism, True or False. For theological music lovers, see our video, Favorite 
old time Christian bluegrass gospel music, Psalm 98 verses four and five. With over 214,000 viewings, we have also posted several music videos by my own daughter, Marlena Wessels, from her CD, Win This Fight, songs she has written and performed herself. To see our music videos, please go to our main YouTube channel page. Scroll down to our multiple playlists. Arrow over to our playlist called Our Radio Shows with National Christian Authors and Music Vids. Once there, scroll down to the bottom of the playlist where the music videos are listed. I could go on and on, but this should be sufficient for now. Don't forget to check out our main YouTube channel, C Answers TV, which stands for Christian Answers Television, also which has over 19 playlists by topic as you scroll down our channel page. Now, on with our main presentation. Praise God. Good to have uh, uh, so many of you here uh, this evening. It's a special night. We're going to hear the testimony of one who has found Jesus to be her hiding place. And testimonies are wonderful because they remind us of uh, our own stories. And we all have these individual stories of how the Lord of grace reached into our lives and uh, gave us faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and brought us uh, into his kingdom. Uh, tomorrow... Uh, my family and I and our um, guest, a sojourner from uh, the foreign land of France, we're going to be traveling uh, to um, South Texas to see a wedding. And one of the things that weddings do is they uh, reinvigorate your own marriage as you see these vows made in the presence of God and it reminds you of your own uh, wedding vows. In many ways, a testimony is like that because uh, we hear uh, of... Um, the Lord saving someone and hear from a new believer the excitement and the joy of finding Jesus Christ and it reminds us of our own uh, salvation, those of us who have experienced the marvelous and amazing grace of our Lord Jesus. Our, um, our guest speaker is not a public speaker and I want to introduce her to you. Her name is Camille Jolie. Many of you met her on Sunday and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, how she came uh, to be here and, uh, and why uh, we've invited her to come and speak to us tonight in lieu of our uh, normal uh, Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, so I got a, an email from one of the pastors at High Point Baptist Church here in Austin uh, saying, Pastor Greg, have you seen this? And it just had a link. And so I clicked on the link and I began to watch uh, as uh, Bayshore Baptist Church and their pastor, uh, Mark Red, introduced uh, Camille. Uh, he had bumped into her that morning and she began to tell her story. And at this point, uh, all I knew was that she was traveling from France, that she'd come on by boat and with a backpack and that she was on her way to see a church in Austin, Texas to say thank you to them for uh, the sharing the gospel to her through video ministries uh, in France. And uh, I, I wept as I uh, li listened and, and watched uh, her glorify God. And I called up uh, this pastor uh, at High Point Baptist Church. And I said, thank you for sending that. That was amazing. Brother, is she coming to your church? What church is this that she's coming to? And he said, no, I think it's your church that she's coming to. And, and so I called him, and, um, and he directed me to others who uh, had more information. And I found out that, indeed, she was, she was coming here. But she was not coming here to stand here and to, to speak. This is very unnatural for her. Uh, as uh, a non-native uh, speaker, as one who does not speak uh, in public, her intention was to come and sit in the back on Sunday and to find Larry Wessels and uh, to thank him uh, for 
his uh, ministry uh, to her. Uh, she was planning on coming unannounced to us. The Lord had different plans, and he announced her arrival in a miraculous and amazing way. Uh, so it's, uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to welcome Camille Jolie. Camille, come on up here. I'm going to pray for Camille when she uh, gets up here. Uh, she's very nervous and, and scared to be speaking uh, before you, but I know the Lord will, um, will give her the words. So uh, stand here and um, uh, let me pray, and then uh, you, you speak. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Almighty Lord, that you are sovereign, that you are the Most High God, that you reign over all things, that you have ordained even this hour before the foundation of the world, and that we can trust you, that you are worthy. And I pray that you would especially anoint your daughter Camille with the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would give her the words to say, and that you would edify your people, and that above all else, that you would receive glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So you want to make sure that this is turned on? God bless you. So, um, praise the Lord indeed, because he brought me here. Uh, as I stand tonight, uh, I, it's like I don't remember how, how I, I got here. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know at all what I'm going to say to you, but God knows all what I'm going to say to you. <laughs> so, I'm just going to trust him. It's, it's all I can do. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I understand that uh, hearing uh, what the Lord has done in my life can, can help you somehow in your own work with him. So uh, this is how he brought me here. <clears throat> when I was born, I was born in an uh, atheist family, not believing uh, in God. And uh, actually, when I was very small, I, I did believe in God, walking just in the garden and seeing the beauty of the creation. But I, I really had no words for it. It was just a feeling that it was powerful and beautiful. But then, um, I guess evolution theory uh, made a big damage in my mind and heart. Um, providing an explanation for everything, but uh, without ever mentioning God and his true love and beauty and intelligence of his plans. So my mind was taught very young to rely on men, their science, their knowledge, their teaching, and uh, I, I totally soaked it up. And uh, also I learned uh, by myself to lie and steal also uh, because I thought it was easier. And today, I'm here to tell that it is easier to tell the truth. <laughs> and uh, even we, we say that the truth can be choked or buried. And it, we, we could not say that if the truth was not alive. So we never say that we bury a lie or that we choke it because it has no life in it. And uh, I just thank God that now all of this makes real sense and that Jesus is the truth and that he is alive. And uh, what happened? was, uh, so growing up, I, w I was molded by the world, and I became this uh, young lady, and I developed a strong self-confidence, because um, I had nothing higher than me to put my confidence in. I did not trust my parents, because I could see their failures. I, I did not know that it was normal, that they were not perfect. 
You don't know that. And uh, I thought uh, that uh, you were the master of your own destiny. And um, I was pursuing after uh, fleshly attractions. And um, I went uh, astray. And I, also, I hurt many people. Um, but uh, God was already active in my life. I did not know that. But looking back now, I can see. And uh, he protected me from the world power of the air. When I was six, I, I remember I watched the news. And I remember thinking at the end of it, well, this is all very fake and sad. And it's not by showing a puppy at the end that it will erase all the violence. And so I, I decided I never watch the news again. And <laughs> today, I, I think, now, OK, thank God, because uh, this, is, this is from him. It was from him already. And uh, then I decided to study music. And it was not to praise God. It was to go far away from my parents' house. This was the true reason, so that I could do what I wanted then again. And uh, I studied uh, music. And then I studied Gregorian chant, which is a chant of the Catholic Church. But I thought that the church was just this remaining leftovers of history and that the people were still, some were still believing in it. And <clears throat> soon enough, they would stop and understand it, it, was, it belonged to the past. And um, I found myself in church for the first time. It was seven years ago. And uh, then I was into this setting where all was codified. It was in Catholic church. And uh, I did not understand anything. I did not know when we should kneel down, when we should bow, when we should turn, when we should. And somebody was always uh, telling me, OK, do like this, do like that. And, <laughs> and I thought, wow, those people, they are better than me. They know all these things that I don't know. And, uh, but I, something was wrong because they had these white clothes that they would put on for their service. But then when it was over, they would just um, put the white cloth away and uh, go on like everybody else with uh, the same mean, mean attitude and uh, hypocrisy. So I remember thinking, but is Christianity really something that you put, put on and then you go to church and then you put off? But I was uh, very much attracted to Gregorian chant, and it was very easy for me. And that was really weird, because even in music, I was taught that there was a slow evolution process, and people be before the 11th century did not understand that they could, they could put two different notes together. You know, they were still very dumb. And <laughs> because of this evolution, so uh, no. But later, they discovered that, wow, they could put two notes together, wow. <laughs> and <laughs> I thought, but wait a minute. Those chants uh, do not seem so dumb to me. And uh, th there is something wrong here, too. Um, at that time, I was uh, living together with, uh, with a boyfriend. And as I discovered Gregorian chant, he would tease me a lot. And he would call me Sister Camille and make fun of me. And it was so annoying because I was like, but you don't get it. There is something. But the more I, I tried to say there is something and I didn't know what, he was really uh, teasing me because he was very well at ease with the world and, and everything. Um, so then. I found myself uh, researching, researching uh, about, actually, about evil. 
may sound weird, but um, I could see all those weird things happening in the world, but I, know, I knew that what we were told was not true, so I would research by other means. That's where I started to use the internet for videos. And uh, somehow, I found that it was the last days, and it matched up with biblical prophecies. But for me, I, I thought it was just another prophecy. And so uh, I did not care much about that. But already, uh, I was starting to be attracted to the world of God, the world of God, sorry. And I could not believe, because of this evolution theory, uh, I, I heard at church that the Bible was the word of God, but um, people were not really acting upon it. So I thought, OK, it's just a manner of speaking. And uh, it's easy to allegorize and to say, oh, it's great literature, it's great poetry. And so we can go on with our life like that very easily. Um, but there was something more, and I would stumble over what other would call details. Like, uh, I once heard from the Bible that Jesus said, do not call anybody father on the earth, because you have one father which is in heaven. So I was like, OK, but why would, uh, would we have to call every priest father? Uh, because it, it, it's contrary. But when I would ask a priest about that, he would say, oh, uh, you, you don't know anything, and like that. And it was true. I said, yeah, I know. This is why I ask you. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yes. And uh, actually, when I was researching about all this evil, many false teachings came to me and uh, denigrated denigrated the truth of Jesus Christ. And so uh, in 2009, when uh, God struck me with the truth of creation, just because all of a sudden it was obvious, it struck me like, OK, oh yes, creation is true. And I, ha I had still all those false teachings in me. But it struck me, and I thought, oh, but actually, then if I believe, it means I'm a believer. So OK, I'm, I'm no longer atheist. Sorry, uh, misunderstanding. I'm a believer. I believe in, I believe in God, the creator. So I, I would tell everybody, OK, no, no, misunderstanding. And this is when I remember that when I was very small, it was obvious to me then, too. And um, at this time, I started to, to, to want to be baptized, because I thought this, is, this was the way to salvation, I thought, well, actually, I had never too much heard about salvation, even attending and singing in church. But um, I thought it was the way to belong, the way to learn. I, I thought it was all through knowledge. And uh, I was very confused still. And at that time, I, I was not sure about Jesus Christ. So actually, I, I begin to read the Quran. And my heart grew very cold and scared. But not the reverential fear of God, uh, a fear of a bad fear, because the love of God was not there. So I turned back to the Bible, but I, I felt really better. And I still thought at that time that Hearing three chunks of text on every Sunday was huge already. <laughs> so um, I, I did not have my own Bible. And uh, I, I thought already this was very much, and I, I did not read it. And uh, I did not read it by myself. But my heart would memorize verses from the Bible. And that's where Gregorian Chant really helped me because it had all, uh, well, some verses from the Bible, which really were sewn into my heart with a good melody. And uh, it would comfort me so much. I found myself in situations where 
I, I was very depressed. I was so down and medicated. And, but Gregorian chant was still a big help for me. And uh, also, uh, with this research I was telling you about, uh, about the evil prevalent in the world, at some point, I started of, to think that the devil was real and he was active. So God used this, I guess, to nourish my faith the other way. So because if evil was real, then you, you had to be some truth on the other side and say, oh, but yes. So if evil is real, then good is even more real. And um, it, uh, it pushed me to research more and more. And uh, at that time, I was still persuaded that the true Christianity was in Roman Catholicism. And because I had not read that in the Bible, many verses contradicting. And I was uncomfortable with many things. But I would reason myself and put that aside. OK, I was always thinking it's because of me, because I don't understand very well why we would have to pray to Mary and uh, why there is a pope that looks so wealthy. Uh, I did not understand many things, but I still listened to their teaching that they were the truth. And I, I heard at that time kind of a good news is that they were here. They were here for us. This, this was the good news uh, and for me. And um, what happened then? <sighs> is uh, I, I found myself teaching Gregorian chant. And um, I, I volunteered then to go to Africa. And this was uh, two years ago. And uh, I was working in the Catholic Church, but still not baptized, because they would always say to me, you have to find a parish and stay there for a little while, not uh, move around, and go through this catechism. And I, I was not comfortable with that. And um, so I was still not baptized. And I was trying to serve God, because I thought I had to, her to earn it. I thought it was a matter of what you do in order to be accepted before God. I did not know it was through faith that the truth lightens our hearts and life and brings life, actually. And um, in Africa, also many difficult situations came. And I could feel that some help was coming from God directly. But I was still confused. I said, OK, I'm not baptized, but I still get some help. I did not know it was grace and uh, because this is the thing uh, in Roman Catholicism. Grace is in the sacraments. It is uh, through taking the Holy Communion that then you get grace. So because I, I could not have that, I would always stand on the side and see everybody go. And I would stay there and, uh, and be very sad. I could not take part uh, of that. Then something really difficult happened. I was really alone. It, it was like God was cornering me into a position. I could do nothing. I could only cry out to him. And uh, I did. But knowing that uh, it, I would not yet be answered. And. Uh, Actually, what happened to me is what I was afraid to become pregnant. And if I were, then ah, God showed me, showed me at that moment that the biggest fear I had was not to be pregnant without being married. It was not to bring shame to myself or to friends because I was in Africa. It was that if I was, 
Well, then I could not get baptized, and I would never have access to him. And uh, that broke my heart. But at the same moment, it comforted me because I thought, wow, this is what matters the most to me. And uh, I thought, well, it, it must be a good thing maybe in the eyes of God. So I came back um, one year ago, and I had exhausted myself trying to teach all over the country and uh, on my own by, uh, I don't know how many Fahrenheit degrees, but anyway, and uh, without cheese, can you imagine? And anyway, I, I thought, okay, I have no strength to serve God and to be acceptable to him because I'm not baptized and I cannot access the sacraments and receive all this grace. Although I had sadly witnessed that some people may take the Holy Communion every day and it would not prevent them from sinning. So I was confused then again. And I was so exhausted when I come back, I came back and I thought, okay, now really if I, if I don't get baptized, I will never have any strength at all. And I thought I need to prepare myself for this because being an adult, I have many, many history of falsehood from the world and from false teachings that prevent me from being ready for this baptism. So I thought that reading the Bible would be a good thing. And so I, I did not have a French Bible when I came back and I, I bought an English Bible and uh, it, it was really different. I mean, uh, the words do carry meanings and when we are very used to hearing some words, then uh, it's like we don't hear them anymore. And the text was renewed through the English Bible at that time. And as I found a priest that was willing to baptize me in a Marian sanctuary in the south of France, all the questions about Roman Catholicism uh, arose and uh, I, I could not reconcile. The more I was studying the Bible and getting help from videos, from the internet, Bible studies, and the, the more I, I could not reconcile. But I had not found Larry Wessel's videos yet. And, uh, um, so last year, around June, I started to really research about evolution and creation. And uh, I would watch debates about this issue and, uh, and find out how pervasive and how, how wicked this whole process is and how it had affected me deeply and I wanted to unroot everything so that my heart would be pure. And uh, I still thought it was my doing. And then... Um, it was in July, I came across an article about the, the Pope, Jean-Paul II, Jean-Paul II. He was pretty much acknowledging this evolution theory. And at that moment, it was the, the extra drop. And I, I mean, I said, no, it is, it is just too much. I cannot be part of this church because I cannot believe that the Pope is infallible. So if I were to be part of this church, it would not be honest. I would be like a hypocrite going there and not really believing what, what they tell me to believe. So um, then I researched about Protestantism. And I was really scared at first. But immediately, I found Larry Wessels and Rob Zinn's videos. <laughs> and there they were calmly discussing all the problems with the Catholic Church, <laughs> with their church. And, uh, and they would always begin their videos by this one chart. Uh, OK, so Rob, what do we have here? And uh, <laughs> here is the Philippian jailer asking Paul, what should I do to be saved? And they have one part of the chart saying what the Bible says. 
that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, you and your family. And the other part of the chart said, keep the seven sacraments and other doctrines of the Roman Catholic system and perhaps you should be safe. <laughs> <laughs> and this contrast made me, br brought me so much comfort and it made so much sense. It was so simple and I thought, wow, but maybe this is God bringing me out of this system and bringing me into his truth. And then it, it all came together. It all made sense that the Bible was true, that it was simple, that there was an access directly Amen. and <laughs> directly to Jesus. And it, it so made sense because otherwise I would, I would have had a disadvantage of being born in an atheist family. But we know that God is just and he does not make respect of person and he hates iniquity. So why, why would he make disadvantages like that? No, there was not, no such thing. He already knew that what he would do in my heart would be glorying to him. Yeah. And uh, the whole Roman Catholic system just, just crumbled. It, it all crumbled and I, I think at that moment the Lord opened my eyes to show me that it was between me and him. <laughs> and I was trying to, uh, to go in it, but without the baptism, uh, the other sacraments, including confession, were not available to me. But it just, it just crumbled and I could go directly to Jesus. <laughs> and this was so powerful, so beautiful, so comforting, so new. And uh, uh, I mean, this is the truth. And uh, he showed me then that everything that was between me and him was idolatry. That, wa that is what was idolatry. And uh, that this system, it was like when you have something beautiful in nature, for example, some waterfall or beautiful cave, and you will always have one, to, one man to stand there and ask others to go through him to visit the stuff. And <laughs> the, this system was like that, and it was man-made, and it, then it just looked like a big theater to me. And I would watch uh, Larry Wessel's videos every day in last September and October. It would bring me so much comfort and strength and a clear presentation of the gospel, which is the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ and simple devotion to him and that his elect just come to faith and, and go to him no matter what. And it was a huge deliverance. And I, feel, I, I felt really pulled by the Lord from this system. But I was really in the core of it. I was a, a singer myself in one church, one parish, Roman Catholic church. And I had many Catholic friends. And uh, I was Gregorian Chen teacher. And, but it was now an honor to give up all those things for the Lord and for the truth and to, you know, uh, take out grave clothes or I don't know how to put it. And uh, <laughs> um, at that time, though, uh, I, I would go around and uh, try to convert Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I would try to see them, don't you see? It is written. It, it was so obvious now to me that it was a big fraud and that it was dangerous because it carried um, kind of a work salvation. Um, I cannot call it a gospel, but a work salvation process. And, but I, I would try to convert them. And uh, <laughs> I would go around really like... Uh, the Lord showed me I was with, like Peter with a sword, 
And the, with the word, I was cutting the, the ears of people, and <laughs> I, I was doing much damage around me. It was not with meekness, no meekness. <laughs> and, uh, but fortunately, the Lord was teaching me already with his scripture, and his word would make so much sense. It, it spake to me in a direct manner. And um, he showed me that the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by ho those who make peace. And uh, not like that. And actually, this was the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So I thought, oh, oh. And, uh, <laughs> and I was burdened with my Catholic friends and, of course, atheist friends and families and Muslim friends. And, but it was a burden, and it was not normal. Jesus says, my burden is light, and my yoke is gentle. So I had to learn from him humility. That uh, he taught me to commit everything to him and to trust him with the salvation of others. I cannot open the eyes of people by force. It is not, <laughs> it is not possible. So this was a difficult time for me and for everybody around me. <laughs> And uh, uh, it was at that time, uh, I, because I felt angry towards the Roman Catholic system. I felt I, ha I had been lied to, and uh, it was deceiving a lot of people. And um, it was six months ago, and I, at that time I, I bought a ticket to, to come to Texas and maybe meet Larry Wessels and say, thank you for your videos and <laughs> for doing all this exposition, uh, which is so comforting because I was, I was alone in this in France. Well, I was not alone. Thanks to, thanks to God, I was not alone. But God used him to bring me a clear presentation of the simplicity of the gospel and to Always trust in the scriptures, trust on the Lord. He's our rock, he's solid, we can trust in him, and uh, no man can save himself. And um, This is why he had to come and be obedient for us. So I had an agent uh, for, uh, who could find me a, a passenger seat on a boat. And uh, I asked him, do you have any boat going to Texas, from Europe to, to Texas? <laughs> and a few days later, he replied me, uh, but he had a, a misspelling in his email. I know it is a very small thing, but there are no small things, right? Yeah. And uh, he said, Instead of, I have had a reply from the shipping company, he said, I have dad a reply from the shipping company. And <laughs> for me, it was just, I said, okay, I'm going. And <laughs> because I have dad too, I have dad in heaven, and he will, he will provide. And uh, I, I was very much trusting in the Lord for this. So I, I bought the ticket. And then, uh, it was in early December last year, and then around Christmas time, um, well, actually I was sad to have no church, and uh, I was alone. I thought, okay, it is good so that I can meditate on how Jesus came into the world, and uh, in a such humble way, and, but still, I had no church. I, it was very sad for me. And uh, also the Bible says that we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. So I started to look for a church in France because uh, the Lord had calmed me down and showed me that his people, his true church was not a building was, and was not uh, a particular denomination. And, uh, because there is only one name through which we can be saved. And his true church 
are the ones who believe in him and the human eye cannot discern the true church is now scattered on all the earth. So he had calmed me, calmed me down very much, uh, showing me that even in France, I could find a church. And uh, I started looking. No, sorry, I say even in France, but there are Protestant churches in France. But at first, I would go to one and discover it was very ecumenical, and um, or go to another, and it was very not so much uh, really living the word of God. So, but then I did find this. Uh, very small evangelical church. When I say small, it is 15, 20 people. She's not small like you. <laughs> and um, it was a good comfort. And um, I had much doubt about this trip. I thought, oh, uh, this is crazy. And <laughs> yes, but I saw in the scriptures I, that I was not to cancel my commitment and that fear was not from God. And fear, uh, we, we did not receive the spirit of fear, uh, but the spirit of adoption, crying out, Abba, Father. So I had to trust. And every fear I had then, it was just another opportunity to trust in him. And uh, well, but I was so scared. And um, <clears throat> then, uh, came the, the time of the embarking. And uh, at this moment, the Lord revealed to me all the things that I, I used to cling to, material things. And uh, yes, I wanted to live without uh, a computer, for example. <laughs> <laughs> and I discovered it was like an electronic teddy bear. I, 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 I did not want to live without a computer. But <laughs> I was so ashamed before God, you know. <laughs> and um, a, a few months before, he had given me like a, a comforting vision to take a trip with, you know, only the Bible. And it was so beautiful because in Roman Catholicism, you have all those other books. And um, <laughs> if you are thinking to travel, um, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> but knowing that the Bible was all the food that my soul needed was so warm to my heart, and it was, it was just a huge blessing. And uh, I embarked on the ship. Um, it was six weeks ago for three weeks. And uh, I, I was really not sure of what I was doing. Uh, because I was afraid I was tempting God, but I was putting myself in a situation where he had to protect me and care for me. And um, I felt like I was throwing myself into his arms. And I, I was not sure um, about that because I understood now the true gospel is I have been bought at the highest price possible, which is his own blood. And I'm not allowed to, to take foolish risks. And uh, but I also saw in the scriptures that tempting God is doubting that he can provide a table in the wilderness. So I thought God can do all things. And it was him all along in my life. So I will just cling to him and trust him. And on the ship, uh, as I was feeling down, I, I remember on the, the second day, uh, I was sitting at <clears throat> after lunch, and I thought, oh, it has been two days on the ship, and I have talked about Jesus to nobody. And uh, I, I was feeling like a real failure. And, uh, and there came the cook of the ship, and he sat down. He says, uh, oh, are you a Catholic? I say, no, did not work. And uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I say, are you a born-again Christian? I say, I 
I can only hope so. But, uh, and we starting discussing and sharing God's word together and encouraging one another mm -hmm. because, of course, the life of those men on the ship, it is very hard. They are far away from their families for many, many months. And, well, you know, with the, the sea and no days off and everything. Yeah. And on the following Sunday, four days later, um, three days later, actually, there was a sign in the crew mess room saying, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Come 6 p.m., uh, we worship you. And I, I thought, wow. And the, I said, did you put that to the cook? He said, no, did you? I said, no. And <laughs> <laughs> but there was this other Christian on board, and so we were at least three of us. And uh, Jesus says that in, if two or three have, are gathered in his name, then he is here in the midst of them. And so it was like a church on board. And it was such a blessing. We could have Bible study and discuss together and share God's word with the other members. And I understood uh, a few days or weeks later that none of them were scheduled on this ship to begin with. <laughs> they were scheduled on other ships, but God had arranged everything and brought us together. And he also showed me that my being here was also good for them. And uh, that was really new for me. Uh, being also an encouragement to others, uh, I did not know that I would have to, I, I, I could be used by the Lord in this manner. So it was really wonderful. <laughs> and uh, when we were approaching Texas, of course I was scared because I did not know anybody and uh, I did not know anything. Uh, I tried to make an hotel reservation, but they canceled it, so I had no place to stay. But then again, <laughs> it was all from God. Because when I disembarked, and uh, they would encourage me and say, God will provide people to, uh, and brothers and sisters to, to take care of you, even in Texas. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, thank you. And <laughs> uh, but still, I, I was scared. So uh, when I disembarked, uh, a cab driver was called uh, to, to pick me up at the Siemens Club. And uh, actually, he, we became friends right away. And it was a great opportunity to share with him the purpose of my trip, uh, which is to say thank you to you and to Larry Wessels and Richard Bennett for their ministries. And uh, it, it was very exciting to meet him. And he helped me to find a, a US phone. And to, he booked me into a hotel room. And uh, uh, he. He told me, OK, if you need anything. And it was, it was so nice. And then I was in this hotel room precisely three weeks ago. And uh, I was outside and thinking, OK, I'm here all alone, don't know anybody, don't know where I am, where I'm going, how I'm going to do anything. But I realized that's actually what I, what I had prayed for to God. I had myself pray that he would remove every comfort that I, I, I had, which was not in him, in his providence, in his might. So I realized, wow, uh, this is what I prayed for, but <laughs> it is scary. <laughs> and so I, I just prayed for instructions. And weirdly enough, I got this kind of instruction, OK, check out of the hotel and start walking with your stuff. <laughs> so I did. And uh, as I was walking, well, I could not travel so light. And <laughs> unfortunately, so I, I saw this um, Kroger store. And uh, I thought, OK, I will just read the scripture and ask for more direction from there and uh, have some green tea, you know. And then, indeed, the Lord provided 
a pastor, actually. <laughs> but I, I did not know yet. And he, when he sees me, he says, oh, what's your story? And <laughs> because I was such an outsider, you know. <laughs> and I say, well, do you have time? <laughs> and he said, yes, yes, sure. And people are so nice in Texas. Do you know that? <laughs> you, you, it's so nice and welcoming and really, it is such a blessing I did not know. And uh, because in France, we are afraid of the US because, uh, well, of the weapons and, and things and, well, anyway. But I shared to him uh, my story or part of it, I guess. <coughs> and then he said, okay, I'm a pastor. And uh, what? <laughs> what now? <laughs> and uh, I thought, oh, I just witnessed to a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't know. <laughs> and he invited me to speak to his church. And uh, actually, he made a video out of it. And then things got crazy. <laughs> People saw the video. And, and uh, even some of you. and. <sighs> Yes, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I thought that if I did not, uh, many times I tried to write an email to Larry Wessels or to the church or to contact. I, I dialed his number many times, but somehow it just did not go through. And I thought, okay, but then it just leaves more room for God to act. So, and it, I was fine if I was not going to meet him, I was fine. If I would not reach Austin, I, I would be fine. And I did not expect anything. But he provided so much. I mean, and it's, uh, even today, I, he gives me the opportunity to say this to you. And uh, it is just, uh, it's just beautiful. And uh, <clears throat> like I told you on Sunday, <clears throat> I read in the scriptures that when Jesus healed 10 uh, sick people one time, one came back. And uh, just the fact that he came back and thanked the Lord, this gave glory to God. So. Here I am, I say thank you. Thank you for your ministries. Thank you for your church. I thank the Lord that he brought me here. It feels unreal for me. And, uh, but he's so mighty and so good. Uh, I'm just overwhelmed to realize that we have such a strong rock in Jesus Christ to stand on. And he frees us from worrying, from fears, from the stainy world system. And uh, he works in us to prepare us for his coming. And I, I am really not worth it to stand here and tell this to you. But you are my brothers and sisters. And I just thank him to bring me here and to m meet with you. And you have been so nice to me. It's very exciting. <coughs> and uh, I'm very happy to hear you praise the Lord. It is very beautiful. It is so beautiful. Thank God and thank Pastor Greg and uh, thanks to Larry Wessels one more time and Richard Bennett and uh, thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you. Glory to God. Isn't that amazing? 
Well, we, uh, after uh, our prayer time, are going to have fellowship in the fellowship hall. We invite you all to join us there. We have birthday cake uh, for birthday night, and uh, there'll be opportunities to, to visit with uh, Camille and to, um, to get to know her a little bit more. She's, um, she's now an honorary uh, day springer from France. <laughs> uh, Check out our websites, BibleQuery.org. This site answers 7,700 Bible questions. HistoryCart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. MuslimHope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available. Hello, this is Larry Wessels, director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian debater. My daughter Marlena has come out with a Christian music CD entitled, Win This Fight. It has eight songs that she has written and performed herself. Some of the song titles are, Win This Fight, Love Song to My Lord, Vessel to You, Waiting to Hear From You, Jesus Is, and Others. YouTube viewers can listen and see Marlena's music video, Jesus Is, right now, free. Just type Marlena Wessels, M-A-R-L-E-N-A-W-E-S-S-E-L-S, -S -E -S -S in the YouTube search box and click on her video on the page that comes next. If you would like more information about getting a copy of her CD, just email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's C-D-E-B-A-T-E-R at aol.com. Or give us a call at 512-218-8022. Thank you, and may the Lord bless you and yours. To the Jesus.